Hi everyone, this video will demonstrate creating a project. So uh, you can just click the new button here right from the home page or you can go to the project explorer. We'll do that. We'll go to start projects, manage projects and when you're on in the uh, project explorer you can click the new button and we're going to choose new project and that's going to open up the new project wizard. The two required fields for a project are a client name and a project name. Now you can select from a list of clients that you've either imported or created out in our uh, client explorer. You can also create them here and create a new one. You can import from Outlook or if you have the QuickBooks integration you could import from QuickBooks as well. For this example I'm going to select an existing client. We'll just choose this one here. And this client happens to have a uh, contact associated with it and that's why this information here populated. You could also create a uh, new contact or import one that you've already created um, or import from Outlook as well. We'll go ahead and create a project name and I'm just going to call this sample project. Now again those are the only two required fields so at this point you could save the file but you're likely going to want to go through um, this entire wizard or almost the entire wizard to at least enter your locations and your systems for this project. But of course, there are many more fields that you could fill in at this point. Um, now, if you don't know all of the information at this point, you can come back um, once you've created the project and enter that information at any time. The project number uh, is a field that you can fill in um, or it will auto-generate for you based off of your settings under the control panel. I'm going to go ahead and choose a progress. This is an editable list. Uh, just click here to edit this and we'll just say the progress is estimating and go ahead and click next. Now uh, the next step would be to enter a site address. Since I use an existing client there's already a site address. The next step would be the billing address. Uh, the next step here would be if you want to apply a price rule. And so what price rules would do um, is set the price for products. Like if you wanted a specific margin on all products that are added to a project, you could uh, define that here. Um, this is not a necessary step. Um, in fact, you likely won't be using this step. Um, when you create a project and you want to change margins, it probably won't be for the entire product line within a project. You're probably going to pick and choose your margins based on what type of equipment it is. Hit next. Uh, this is where you can choose your taxes. Here it's showing the default and if you need to add taxes at this point, you have the manage taxes option here. The next step would be to assign resources to the project. And resources are people that you've set up, whether they're users or not. If you go ahead and click this, if you may recall from a previous video, these are the people slash users that I've created um, for this company. And you could select who you want to assign to this project beside yourself. Like if there's a project manager or a designer, um, you may not know the installers yet, of course. Uh, resources really get used uh, later on if you decide to use our scheduling features when you're creating tasks and service orders at that point in time your resources would be your installers. Hitting next is going to show um, contact information. This this will print on an optional report. Uh, here's the primary contact if you recall from that first step and at this point if you wanted to add any more contacts that are outside of your company you certainly could do that. You could create new ones or import from Outlook or pull from your contact list. If it's uh, an architect or a builder, uh, an electrician, anybody else associated with the project. Go ahead and click next. This is where you can enter a scope of work for the project. And that's just um, basically the narrative of what you're doing on the project. This is also an optional report. Clicking next, this is where we're going to define the locations for the project. And this is an important step. This is how you're going to stay organized as you're adding products to the project, you're going to choose a location and or system to assign those products to. The next step will be systems. There are two buttons here, add and new. Uh, they both have the same drop down, locations or sublocations. You can see they're both the same. New will be if you're going to uh, manually type in the name of the location or sublocation. The add will pull from your preset list. So for this example, we'll just go ahead and choose to add location get a start there. And this is my preset list here. Um, and yours will look slightly different, the one that ships with the software. But of course you can modify this out under your control panel. Um, I'm going to put my first level to be floors. Now um, it's up to you if you want to build a hierarchy here or not. You could just do a room list. Um, generally the final location in the list will be um, room level. So I'm just going to choose uh, first and second here. 
choose add and close and then you can select one of these locations and add sub locations to it in this case since that's a floor my sub locations will then be rooms and I'll just put a few in from this list here do conference room and just for this example we'll add a sub location to the second floor we'll put uh, an equipment closet there and hit add and close so as you can see it's a little hierarchy here and that will um, display in the project for uh, when you add equipment Next would be to add the systems for a project. This is another organization tool. It's also part of um, an optional presentation um, tool in the software. A lot of the client reports are um, geared to group either by location or by system or a combination of those two. By location, then by system, or by system, then by location. Once again, you've got an add button to choose from your preset list or a new button if you want to hand type uh, location. Go ahead and click that and we'll choose a few things here out of the list and these will be the system specific to this project go ahead and click next this is the contract payments now this is a setting under your control panel and of course you can set a default progress payment out there uh, but if it varies uh, per job per job you certainly can modify these here you can delete lines you can move these up and down rename these change your percentages if you'd like uh, you can even enter a fixed amount now at this point in time you may not know uh, this or you may not have a fixed amount to enter of course like I mentioned all of these fields are editable later choose next and here's where um, you can identify any custom fields that you want to use uh, here's an example here I just put required docs um, and you could have a list here of required documents if you wanted to they're just fields that are available to you um, again if you think information needs to be added to this project that you didn't see in the previous steps you can click manage custom fields here and name the custom field and of course enter a value for those once you click save it's going to save the project and it's going to automatically open the project um, to what we call the project editor and as you can see over here in the drop zone there's your locations and your zones and now you would just add your products and uh, labor items and packages as you can see over here to the project and we'll be covering that um, elsewhere in the user's guide so for now I'm just going to close this project file and you'll notice that it's prompting me to check in the project file. This is always good practice. You're going to want to do this. Go ahead and click yes. And what that means is it's now being checked into the SI uh, 2016 server. In the event that you run a backup, you'll always want the most current version of the project file to be on the server. And when you are working on a project, that copy is local. Um, you can read more about that in the user guide, but it is always important that you check in your projects when you're done working on them.